How are you guys doing again? This is a uh, part three of the uh, drive shaft video. Um, the uh, second drive shaft that I've made. Uh, the first one I had, I literally just put it in the car and it would vibrate like hell because it was just too long and it was like a V in the middle. <laughs> but so then the one that I actually made turned out to be a lot better and this should hopefully be the uh, second and last drive shaft that I make here. <laughs> um, I mean, and if anybody wants a uh, you know, custom made drive shaft for a uh, 63 Rambler American, you can uh, uh, send me your um, your contact info and uh, I'll see what I can do. Uh, okay, what I did now I obviously didn't show you guys because it's just hammering and hammering I just got the hammer and hit it here to push the pipe in the, the uh, drive shaft in like the uh, original drive shaft from the junkyard <laughs> there it is and uh, now these things here this drive shaft as you can see see how this is laying flat horizontal right and that part is verticals like standing up right and uh, this is how the uh, drive shaft originally was I believe most of them are like in line so, like both these are like exactly the same position so this would have been like most drive shafts this would probably be like standing up right so both of them are like in phase that's what they mean it mean in phase these are actually 90 degrees out of phase which is just a quarter circle 90 degrees um, so I needed to check that and in order to adjust it I just kept hitting it now that's why it's important that you, I had to keep checking this while I was hitting because obviously this thing is so tight that if I just try to check it at the end this doesn't move anymore um, so I just had to check it before this was all the way in so that it would go in and stay in that place right and as you can see now that one look at the position and just above see that's pretty good that's spot on that's perfect okay and over there I just sanded off the head like this part a little bit because it was kind of rough and there's dirt there's dirt and shit I just sanded it off a little bit with a solid piece of steel backing the sandpaper uh, I think I actually have it here, here, like that. If you use like the spongy type, then it's obviously just going to conform to the curved shape, you know. You want to like sort of plane it, smooth it out flat, not curved. And I've checked this, this seems pretty good. Um, all I got to do now is, yeah, because I, because there's lots of oil here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use like a torch to get some of that oil out just to facilitate with the welding. It's not necessary. The other side, I just kept weld. I just welded the points, you know, and the good thing about the uh, TIG welder is that it actually won't weld, pretty much won't weld unless you put the filler rod in. Right, so I just initially I just turned on the TIG torch. And I just heated up the steel and, you know, burnt off that oil. Um, and that's pretty much how I cleaned it up. That's, if it was MIG welder, the wire, there's no way you can just heat up the steel. It's the wire comes out, right? So there's no such thing as just heating. TIG torque, it's like, it's pretty much like a torch and a welder, two in one, if you will. Um, there's the welds, I just grinded it off a little bit, but they are pretty good. And even, the, now the good thing about this is, you know, even if your welds are shit, this will still hold on. It's not going to break because the original weld is still there. So if you're not too confident about your welding or, um, you could, I mean, you could actually get away with this without welding. I mean, I bet you this would hold on. Or, you know, just to make sure you could just like drill a hole here and put, like just put a bolt through it, you know. 
Um, so you, you could actually do away with like making this drive shaft using only a pipe cutter and, and just a pipe cutter pretty much pipe cutter a hammer and a block of wood and yeah you, you could have done this drive shaft pretty much yeah without welding which is really really interesting uh, if I had taken this to like a if I had this made at like a dry shaft place, this would have cost me, holy fuck, $500, right, so, plus the time, right, you'd have to wait, a lot of these dry shaft places that are busy or just don't want to work, so there you have it, um, what else should I say, I'm forgetting something, Holy uh, fuck, fuck, fuck. Uh, be careful not to hit these things. If you, when you hit them, it like causes like a dent and then you can't get the joint in there. Oh yeah, uh, what I was going to say is this here, as you can see by the texture, by the texture, it's a different kind of steel as this. This is actually cast. Um, so it's got a really high carbon content, but the uh, bottom line is the major point here I'm making uh, is that this here, this type of material, it has a, a, a melting point that's uh, quite a bit higher than this steel here, like this pipe steel. So when you're welding it, you'll have to sort of aim the, the torch, you're using TIG, or even MIG, at at this part and focus the heat on it because otherwise you'll, you're just melting this and you're not welding onto this here it's funny when I was using the TIG torch I could actually see this piece melting while this piece would just get like red hot uh, but it wouldn't melt so I mean it's not a huge difference but it's you know you, you gotta take it into consideration so it does make a, a, a difference um, it's not like terrible, terrible, but you just got to watch out for that. Just make sure that it's welding onto this here. But I mean, in this case, you even got a little bit of the steel here, like the regular steel, because of the old weld, the original weld from this drive shaft. I'd like to figure out what this drive shaft is off of, actually. Literally just went to the junk car. I didn't have to pull it out. It was already out of the car. Uh, it was in the truck, not car, sorry. It was out of the truck section. And uh, here's the uh, part numbers. Here are the numbers that I... Obviously, because I was hitting on it here with the hammer. The uh, I squashed the numbers, but that's the number there. That was there. F65 WCB. Um, curious to know what's it off of. I think uh, it, there was the other one of these. I got two of them. I had two of them. Uh, one's in the car already, and this one is the, like the new one. But uh, they're the same, exactly the same. And one of them was sitting on a, um, what was it, 2007 Dakota, T Tacoma, something like that. So maybe it was off of that truck. And on the other side, there was these inscriptions here, VL3W, there's a big B, like on the corner with the circle around it, which is probably just the uh, uh, the logo of the company. On the other corner is like a C, I have no idea what that means. And in the middle he had VL3W, and there's like a space, and in another place there was 4169, so. Um, I mean, this this is kind of useful because anybody that's you know out there that wants to make something like this you um, you can you can you know just perhaps look up part number search it up and just buy the uh, maybe you can buy this online and because I mean it might be hard like finding this at the junkyard uh, depending on where where you're at like, like I said I just literally picked this up at the junkyard uh, there could be other ones there could be different ones I don't know but uh, this I, I made this work 
so yeah uh, back to the welding just uh, remember that just watch this I mean and if you're not using this method if you're if you like you only have the yoke like just this piece without the pipe and without the weld then you definitely need to be really careful with the welding here because like I said this part melts after this part melts so you got to focus the heat on this and just uh, make sure the uh, like the weld is good otherwise this piece could just come off and you know that that would be really bad if you're like it in the road having a broken drive shaft come out that's that wall man you could ruin the transmission you could cause perhaps a major accident especially with something like heavy duty like this um i think that's it all i gotta do now is weld this and then i gotta balance it and for the balancing what i've seen what you can do is what I'll do is put a cup of water on top of the uh, place where the drive shaft goes into into the differential and then if that vibrates right that's like a vibration sensor whatever you know and you just put that you can maybe put like a magnet to, to secure the cup or tape whatever uh, just so that you can see the vibration then you just put hose clamps around the drive shaft and move them around until until the water stops vibrating as much as possible uh, there's actually a video on that already so I may or may not uh, probably not do a video on that but that's that's the idea um, fuck, 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 anything else I think I think we're done